it's your boy JB in the place to be. Thank you for joining us again. Uh, it means a lot to me that you tuned in. Thank you so much for joining me. You know, in today's video of a bizarre love story, right? It's a story of of love, hope, sadness, and a woman who unknowingly took part in a lesbian relationship. <laughs> <laughs> all right oh yeah our story takes place in the city of jambia of indonesia with a population of 642,000 indonesians where a young woman by the name of noor annie married the man of her dreams that man being anif arafi what makes this man so special right this man was a neurosurgeon who was educated in New York. Yet Nuri thought her husband was surely a phenomenal catch. She met this man, this this outstanding young man, on the dating app Tam Tam, right? And within two months of their meeting, they were already engaged. They were married. Now we have these sorts of apps in the States, right? We got Plenty of Fish, uh, Match.com, Christian Mingles, um, I think that there's like dozens of them, right? And they all have just trolls, man. Some of the ugliest, grotesque, lioness ass people you could ever meet, right? Yeah, but Nuri, she hit the jackpot. This dude was a neurosurgeon, educated stateside, right? And if this were a Disney flick, surely they would have went off and had adventures kids fond memories and lived happily ever after right but that isn't the case not in this one after only 10 months of marriage the wife nuri is seeking and pressing criminal charges against her spouse anif now why did this happen right did he abuse her did he mistreat her did he even lay hands on her like you should lay hands on the like button no something so much worse right he lied to her he lied to her let me explain the husband anif arabif wasn't a man okay and biological modification or gender I'm identity female, has nothing to do with the situation but you know, well at least not in this matter in this unfortunate event anif is a biological woman masquerading as a man with a fabricated Wait, backstory are, okay so. and for the duration of this video instead of saying the last name which i keep butchering we're just going to refer to the husband to the spouse as anif okay so we have nori the wife and anif the lion ass husband <laughs> so you might be thinking to yourself how can someone be married for 10 months and not notice that your husband is actually your wife right first thing any any married couple would go to right it's what happened on the wedding night right that leads us to the clapping right what happened on the wedding night what happened with the clapping of them cheeks man slapping hands and whatnot right the passionate expression of one's physical love for another right according to nuri they had sex frequently she said they were frequently intimate during their marriage and she believed they had engaged in penetrative sex that they had engaged in penetrative intercourse okay anif asked her not to look at his genitals right and she said her eyes were covered with a cloth every time things got steamy man every time it got hot and heavy nah man you gotta put the blindfold on man either that was extremely sexy and this guy was consistent in his romance or she knew something was up man and she was just playing a role right furthermore anif would only get naked when the lights were off right they would only have sex in the dark i'm sure plenty of us out here have crossed that bridge man <laughs> like hey there ain't nothing to look at man especially not over there right Either the waist trainer has failed her or, 
you know, buddy six pack was a keg. I mean, everybody got those sorts of stories, man. Sometimes it's just better with the lights off, but not all the damn time, right? So that should have been a red flag, right? So how did she start to get clued in, right? How, how did this charade start to unravel, right? We have Nori's mom to thank for this, right? Okay, Nori's mom was initially taken by Anif, right? He charmed the hell out of her, right? But this was before the marriage. Afterwards, the mother became suspicious. Why did she become suspicious? It's because Buddy didn't have a job. Yeah, and immediately after they married, Buddy moved in with his wife and her mom and then started asking for money. Like, what would you call that stateside, right? We would call that, um, one call it a pookie, one call it a ray ray. We call that a loser. Loser! You're a right? loser! The mother is becoming increasingly uh, skeptical. I'm sure the daughter opened up to her mom, like, this is how we get down in the sack, you know, this is how we wrestle. <laughs> Shout out to Chad Dickerson. Yeah, so I'm sure Nori and her mom had that discussion, right? And her mom decided to look into things. Yeah, her mom even admitted to trying to get uh, this guy's papers because none of this was adding up. Neurosurgeon, you know, that's one of the highly sought out jobs in, in pretty much everywhere, right? Like, what woman wouldn't bend over backwards and crab walk for a neurosurgeon, right? That's just a question. Comment below if, uh, you know, yeah. So how did it all come to a head, right? Eventually, Nori confronted her husband and ordered him to strip naked. It was only at that point that he admitted to being a woman. A woman by the name of uh, Ariani Arafin. And when she was questioned about what would happen during sex, she admitted to using only her fingers. They were only having sex using digits. So for the most part, if we were to circle back, why would Nori choose to uh, pursue charges against her husband or wife, whichever, right? Against her spouse, right? It would seem as though the likely reason for pursuing charges against her spouse is because Nori finds herself aligning with societal norms, with the norms of her culture, right? All right, if we just look at a few articles... We can see that would more than likely be the case. We can see that in a 2015 article from Indonesia at Melbourne, same-sex marriage in Indonesia, we can see that when it comes to lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transsexual LGBT issues, we Indonesians have not moved past the same old debates. The arguments still coalescence around a binary between natural, vis a vis unnatural, and the authenticity of Indonesian culture, as if homosexuality is a Western issue. If you're watching or listening to this in the States, that's more so the case. The alphabet community has largely made strides in Western cultures, in Western states, and Western countries. But when we move further east, it seems as though they're, they're running into hiccups, right? If we read the article further, um, we can see that homosexuality is neither legal nor illegal in Indonesia. The state has largely maintained this neutral stance, aside from a few exceptions, such as the 2008 anti-pornography law, which classifies homosexuality as deviant behavior and local regulations that have sought to equate homosexuality with prostitutions. So this could be a bit of what Nori has to take into account with her unknowingly marrying a woman. And I have my suspicions that she might have knew the entire time, but I don't walk in her shoes, man. I'm not wearing her pumps. I couldn't possibly know. If we look at another article... Uh, this time from NBC News, published in 2020, Indonesia proposes bill to force LGBTQ people into rehabilitation. 
fascinating stuff here, right? It's called the Family Resilience Bill, in which lawmakers in Indonesia are pushing legislation that would force LGBTQ people into government-sanctioned rehabilitation centers to cure them of their sexual orientation or gender identity, okay? The legislation would force gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people to undergo rehabilitation at a series of religiously based treatment centers that would hypothetically be opened across the conservative archipelago. If they do not already submit to rehabilitation, their family members could even be compelled to report them. Okay? Maybe Nori's mom was aware of this. Maybe she saw this on the horizon. She didn't want this sort of bad uh, mojo falling on her daughter. Yeah, government methods are likely to include spiritual guidance, social, psychological, and medical rehabilitation. All right. So we can see that a possible motivation for Nori to press charges against her spouse would more than likely be to keep her out of the crosshairs of legal ramifications. You might be asking yourself, how is this possible, right? How is it possible that the Indonesian government can create laws, create bills that target sexual activity and one's uh, sexual preference and identity, right? If you look at this one last article by the Jakarta Post, difficult for Indonesia to legalize gay marriage, right? We're just going to read one line out of it, right? We're going to read just one line out of it. Marriages in the country with the world's largest Muslim population took place not only in the domain of the state, but also religion. So the state should not legalize marriages that contravene religious principles. So in summary, you know, if we had to paraphrase this, in this instance, there is no separation between church and state. Okay? I thought this was a fascinating story. Uh, the amount of deceit, the extent that Arif, uh, a.k.a. Ariani, uh, went to deceive Nori and her mom. Yeah, and the whole idea behind, you know, their marital practices, right, behind closed doors. You know, you go in 10 months, ain't seen your spouse. Ain't seen your wife, ain't seen your husband, you know, buck naked. Man. <laughs> I just thought that was bizarre. Extremely bizarre. But what do you think, right? Go ahead and comment below. Let me know if you found this interesting, man. It's not my usual sort of content. It, it, it just struck me so out of the blue, man. I wanted to get you guys' opinions on it. Like, share, comment below. Um, be sure to hit that like button on the way out and, uh, peace.